and peace. These are the gifts that are yours from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, brothers and sisters in Christ, it seems that our culture wants everything in bullet points. You know what a bullet point is, right? Short phrases, short sentences, sometimes not even sentences, just long enough to get the message across. Usually found in a list for speakers and presenters, and yes, even for pastors. They all use bullet points in their presentations to help the audience focus on what they are supposed to be hearing the speakers say in order to remember it in as few words as possible. Now usually the speech or the presentation, or in this case the sermon, seems to take much longer than it would to just read off the bullet points. There is usually more explanation to go along with it, but many people might get frustrated and say, if he would only stick to the bullet points, we would all be out of here by now. Because that is the way society is. That is the society that we live in. We want everything done fast, quickly, so that we can get on with our day. For all of its flaws, and there are indeed many, Twitter has only fed this impulse. If you can't say it in 285 characters or less, then it's not worth saying and it's not worth reading. Politicians rely more on talking points than on long speeches. If you can't convince me or persuade me in just a couple sentences, then I won't listen. And so it is often in the church as well. Or maybe better yet, outside of the church. To learn about Christianity, a new believer doesn't want to go through a lifetime of Sunday school, confirmation class, and then continue on into adult Bible class, and then dedicate themselves to a lifetime of learning God's Word. No, our sinful nature says, just tell me what I need to know, give me the bullet points, keep it short, keep it quick, don't bore me with the details. I have found in many conversations with Christians and with non-Christians, in my position as a pastor, that people will come to me with a question that they really don't want answered. It is more of a question as a gotcha, as an attack on Christianity. Quite often, because time does not allow, they leave the very short conversation unsatisfied with the answer that I give them because it was, quite frankly, not enough time. Because for many things, there's a lot of unpacking to do and explanation needed to the answers that we give. Of course, quite often they are asking what I would call the wrong questions, but that also takes some explaining. For instance, an unbeliever might ask a question like this, if God is all about love, then why does he hate homosexuals? Well, there's a lot to unpack in that very loaded question. <clears throat> or they might say, if science says the earth is millions of years old, how can you say that God created it in six days? How can I possibly answer that question in 285 characters or less? Or they might say, why didn't God, if he is all powerful, why didn't God stop the shootings? in Atlanta and in Colorado. Answer me now. Why didn't God stop these shootings? But the truths of God's word are not always so quickly and easily laid out. Before somebody can be convinced, for instance, that homosexuality is a sin, we have to define what sin is. What is sexuality? For what purpose did God give us? our sexuality and why do you say that God hates homosexuals what does Jesus death on the cross mean to the homosexual certainly there's a lot to unpack there 
There's a lot to explain and a lot to answer. To properly distinguish law and gospel, to properly lay out repentance and forgiveness, well, it takes a little bit more fleshing out, and nobody wants to make time for that. Even many in the church want shorter sermons, shorter Bible readings, you didn't get that this morning, shorter services. Yes, our gospel reading today, the complete chapter of Mark 15 laying out the whole passion of Jesus. It wasn't short, but it is necessary for us to be reminded of what Jesus suffered for us. But if we were to keep it to 285 characters or less, what would the gospel look like then? It is our tradition for confirmations to assign and select confirmation verses. A verse from scripture that summarizes the Christian faith that summarizes <coughs> excuse me summarizes the gospel message and the Christian life our confirmation verses are like bullet points short pithy statements that we will carry with us for the rest of our lives to remember God Jesus and his love for us now, Logan and Addie have picked some good verses for today's service. They have picked some good verses to remind them of God's unfailing love to them. Logan is reminded that nothing can separate him from that love of God. Addie is discouraged, that is encouraged, not discouraged, says, be courageous. For I am with you always. The love of God goes with her everywhere she goes. Yes, these are wonderful verses. But to explain that love of God to an unbeliever, we still might need to unpack some things in those verses. Why do we need not fear anything can separate us from the love of God? Why do we know that God is with us wherever we go? Perhaps we need more explanation. Many years ago, there was a man with a rainbow afro wig who would go to major sporting events and hold up a sign. Remember what the sign said? John 3.16. The gospel in a nutshell, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that whoever believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Short, easy statement to remember. Even unbelievers are familiar with John 3.16, thanks to the rainbow Afro wig man. But even John 3.16 doesn't say it all. What does it mean that God gave his son? What does it mean to believe in him? How does that guarantee us salvation and eternal life? Yes. We need more unpacking, even to understand John 3.16. And so, let me present to you our epistle reading today. Our epistle reading from Philippians chapter 2 might be, if any, the best gospel in a nutshell statement, the best summary of Christian faith, of the Christian life, and certainly what Jesus has done for us and who Jesus is. I read to you again. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ 
is Lord to the glory of God the Father. There it is, brothers and sisters in Christ, who Jesus is, what he has done, and what our response is in this Christian life. Jesus is the one who was incarnate, born in the likeness of men. He is the one who has humbled himself, emptied himself to take on human nature, even though he was in the very nature God. He did not consider equality with God a thing to be grasped. And yes, he is the one who by his death has paid the price for your sins and for mine. And because of this, God the Father has highly exalted him. He is the exalted one. You guys remember this? State of humiliation and the state of exaltation, right? Here it is, right here in Philippians chapter 2. Jesus is exalted. He is lifted up. He is glorified by his death and resurrection. And on his second coming, brothers and sisters in Christ, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Everybody, the unbeliever and the believer alike, will say Jesus is the one true God. <coughs> but we have the opportunity to confess it in this life. We have the opportunity to kneel before the altar of God and to confess our faith before his congregation and church. We have the opportunity to proclaim our faith so that when he comes again, we will be counted righteous and worthy of eternal life. Because we have not denied Jesus in this life, he will not deny us before his Father in heaven. And yes, he will give you white robes of righteousness in which you will reside in the kingdom of heaven for eternity. Yes, every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess. But today, Logan and Addie kneel before their Lord and they confess their faith before his church. Praise be to God that he has called them his own in their baptism, in which he gave them that white robe of righteousness. Praise be to God that they have continued in that Christian faith, which they confess today. And we pray to God that they will continue to walk with Jesus throughout their lives until he comes again to call them to himself. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. <laughs>